Uh, we have joining us this evening is Shamina Jaraj, and she is a pharmacist, a Reiki practitioner, and she is also the owner and founder of um, Emotional Hygiene as a Psychotherapist. We also have joining us Neelam Herji, who's an educator, founder of Flow, Glow, Grow, specializing in meditation and mindfulness coaching with children and generally everybody out there, all of us that you know, require some relaxation and some centering with mindfulness and with some meditation work. <laughs> so uh, Neelam is also a Reiki master and I'm so excited to have these two lovely ladies as my guests on the show this evening as we have the most dynamic, eye-opening conversation about the power of words, the way we use our words, the way we use our words to shape our realities, the way we use our words to create new experiences or keep us stuck in experiences. So thank you ladies for joining us here this evening. Thank you, Tanya. So, so we're going to start this evening um, just by opening up and really having the two of you share with our audience what it was like for you when you started to have your aha moments in your life of what it was like to, um, when you start to realize that words were really powerful and that you had the ability to reshape your own life and your own life experiences. So Neil, I mean, well, let's begin with you. Sure, thanks, Tanya. Um, you know, for me, actually, it started probably about 10 years ago. Um, my whole life has shifted really from 10 years ago, a decade ago, and I was really in a really bad place. Um, we have those moments in life where, you know, we're kind of in that rut, that dark place. Uh, for me, mentally, physically, um, emotionally, spiritually, I just felt like the walls of the world were caving in on me and nothing for me within me felt like it was going right. Not to say I didn't have everything. I mean, I had marriage, I had kids, I had the teaching role. I had all the roles, but they weren't quite filling me. And I almost felt like that sensation of being lost, lost in this lonely world. And um, for me, it actually started by taking a pen one day and a notebook, literally a notebook, not even a journal, just a notebook that I had. And I started writing and I started writing and writing and writing. And what I was writing was my thoughts, my feelings, um, the deep rooted stuff that I wasn't able to really communicate with others. Cause I was like, okay, everyone's doing well. It's probably just me. Right. right. Um, that feeling of, uh, I don't belong. I don't fit in what's going on. I'm lost. It's just me. Right. So, you know, this book and the pen became my friend, my best friend actually. And I just started writing frantically. And then it wasn't until I wrote three words and they have been life-changing for me and they continue to be life-changing. And those words were, who am I? The minute I wrote those words and I just kind of paused and kind of delved deeper and deeper to really look at who am I? Like, who is Neelam? Who is she? Who is Neelam in this body? Who is Neelam as a spiritual being? Who is Neelam as a physical being? Who is Neelam in all these roles? Those and are it was big questions. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a loaded question. Little did I know, I just wrote the three words. I didn't know right. it was all this stuff that was going right. to come out of it. But I was so glad that it did because yeah. then for me, my life started to slowly shift, and it still is, of course, because it's ever evolving, um, into becoming more of a purposeful living. Um, mm. You know, my roles are somewhat the same, if not more. But I feel like there's purpose in it now, and it all mm. came from those three words. And I'm you know, so happy that we could have this conversation about. Yeah, well, That's and how it started so with connected for you, right? Like you've actually watched yourself go from this, you know, when you say like a whirlwind, like a tornado, almost a spiritual, emotional, soulful big tornado and what words were able to do for you to bring you out of that space and into a healthier space, which look at what good it, it helped you define yourself. It helped you, or really not even define because I don't, not, Sure, it's defining. Still finding. Understand, well, exactly. understanding you, right? You evolve and, you know, you found your strength, your personal power. And I think the biggest thing you found was your purpose. You understood what your purpose was through that. So congratulations. Thank um, you. Sh yeah. So Shamina, and for you, what was that like for you with your aha moment of, of words, you know, and when you started to recognize it was very powerful? So my story actually started when I was little. Um, I'm a very curious person, and I was always curious about the world. Um, what is life? Uh, why the suffering? Why people act the way they are? Um, and this journey recently had led me to 
study human psyche. Mm. So when I was studying psychotherapy, I delved into my own psyche. And then I started looking at myself really inside of me. Like, how do I walk in life? How do I see life? How do I see myself? And what stories do I tell myself? A powerful one too, right? Yeah, it was really eye-opening because I did not, I was not aware of these things. I was just looking outside, which is good, right? It's good to reflect on like what's happening around you. But it's very important to look inside of you too, to see, okay, so what, what sort of things I project outside and who am I really, right? And um, these stories, they are made up of individual words. And that's the power there, right? Wow. So those three words for you, Neelam, created that much power. But I think the stories that you tell yourself uh, about yourself, and the stories you tell others about you and about themselves also have that, those, that power. Because, you know, if you don't like the story that you tell yourself, you have the choice there. Do you want to change it or not? Right? I think that's the part that people don't realize that they have the power to do is I, th I think a lot of times we feel helpless because we don't have the tools. We don't understand what's going on. Um, so, you know, you, you had this natural gift that you were just curious that led you on that path. And, you know, I encourage everybody to be curious about who they are because that led you to realizing that you had the power, Shamina, to change that narrative, change that story. So good for you. Exactly. Otherwise, you're just, you know, a lot of times we get lost in life right? There's so much around us. There's so much needing our attention. So we don't have that time to look inside. Okay. Say, okay. So and actually even like, what do I want from life? Mm -hmm. And uh, we were just talking about this power of words, right? So what do, what do, you, do, what do we mean actually by saying that the words have power? What does it mean? Words are coming out of you and yes. sound, right? And the sound is, you know, going out into the universe and then it becomes creation. The sound also vibrates in your body, mm -hmm. right? So when, when you put it, when you put something out there in the universe, you are actually creating something, right? creating something for yourself, creating something for the world. I'm in heaven listening to you right now, I gotta say. <laughs> and you know what, Shamina, <laughs> this is amazing because it actually really reminds me of um, some research that I kind of um, delved into when I was going through, you know, you know, it's amazing when you say, who am I? All of a sudden you get answers, right? Like yes. you just get answers from books or people or your experiences, people just come your way and like, this is who you are. Let me show you, let me tell you about it, right? <laughs> And so one of these research was, I'm, I'm pretty sure many people know it already, it's from um, Dr. Masaru Emoto. Yes. Right, right? He studied the water crystals. And it's, it was just so profound. And as you said, Shamina, like eye-opening because we don't realize exactly how much power our words contain because of the frequency and vibration. And um, the research, and actually today, I'd love to share with your audience, Tanya, if you can, I'm going to just share my screen here. Yeah, absolutely. He basically, Dr. Emoto basically took some water crystals, water, and he just used words, uh, the frequency of words. And then he examined the crystals again. And he used, of course, positive words and negative words. So some of the positive words were like um, love, uh, you're beautiful, phrases like that. And some of the negative words were like, you're, you know, you make me sick, you're ugly, you fool. And I just want to share what the crystals kind of look like before the fact and after the fact. And it's quite profound. When I it saw is. these images, yes. I was like, what? This is like what it did to water. And so, and you know, we're aware that we're made up of like 75% water. The earth is made up of 75% water. So if this is happening to water, with these words being said to water, 
what is happening to us when we're saying these words, not just to ourselves, or what is happening to us when other people are sharing these words with us or saying them, right? So here's a crystal, words of love, encouragement. They're very symmetrical. Uh, they kind of look like snowflakes, pretty, geometrical. And then look at the ones with the words of hate and anger and criticism, right? Discolored, deformed. And that was really powerful. When I saw that, at that point, I was educating all my students. I'm a teacher, so I was educating all my students about this. I would so show what, how is it year. amazing it is it for them to have this at that age? I think yeah. every teacher should be teaching children that. And it just resonates because it's like it's so tactile that you can see the image. And then there were these other pictures as well um, with other words that I'd like to share. Words like thank you, right? Like we don't mm. even realize the word thank you carries in its own vibration. Um, wisdom, truth. Uh, eternal there's the i love you angel peace and then you can see the other ones you fool you know um even prayer you know the fact of an intention or a prayer this was like polluted water before prayer but then the same water after the prayer and look how it changed and that was profound for me and so i would start teaching the students about water and not just water but of course connecting it back to us mm -hmm. um, and I remember there was this one time um, when I taught my grade three class and we were doing a unit on plants. And this was amazing. Like the reactions, I wish I had a video clip of it, but I couldn't take a video in my classroom. But what they had to do was every morning, I had two plants. Um, I had a plant where I told them when they enter the door, they had to greet both plants. One was in a negative manner, like basically saying, you know, you're ugly, you're not nice. I don't like you. And the other one with kind words, you're beautiful. I'm so happy to see you today. And then I didn't tell them anything about it, but over a week or two, they would just observe on a daily basis, write down their observations as to what they noticed. And this isn't exactly the photo because I didn't take a photo, but this is what basically happened to the plant. Isn't and it amazing? It is incredible, right? Wow. So you can see that the students can actually tend to understand that all living things, plants, you know, the water, right? Because it's molecular structure. We are, you know, we have cells in us. We're nature. We're nature, exactly. We're all connected. And so the power of words, the words that we say to ourselves, the words that we say to each other, and of course I tied in with bullying and things like that as well, um, right? It just hit home for them. And it's been hitting home for me every time I see these images. Because I'm like, it's, I remember when I have myself talk that dialogue that happens and those moments when I'm negating myself, because it's very practical and human to do that. Yes. I try to remember those moments. I remember those water crystals and I remember the plant and I'm like, wait a minute, what am I saying to myself and how is it impacting me? Your body. Right? Yeah. Like it's just, and I remember thinking that myself. So I'm with you. We're drinking the same Kool-Aid is what I say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, and, and, and Shimino, like in adding to that, so, you know, um, exactly the same thing, as I said, it, they vibrate um, in our body and they create, they start creating already without even you knowing, right? So words are what? They are stories, they are thoughts, they are our emotions, okay, when they come out. Um, even if you reflect saying, okay, maybe not all words, right? But think about it, if I say saw, Versus if I say hard, right? Um, you know, you will notice immediately the reaction that, that you get uh, that carries with soft or hard. Or if I say, you know, uh, sparkly or light or shiny versus dull or heavy, right? Or dark. I would say so feel you your body. Think, yeah, exactly, exactly. And um, I think, you know, the really first step is noticing what you are putting out there. That's so important. Mm -hmm. and, and that's exactly where doing? mindfulness comes in, right? Is that right. stop, pause, and notice. Just so it's notice. Flow, it's flow, glow, grow. And that's that throws right. my tongue to assert, slows me down. Right. Um, are you going into every school out there then and making sure that this is part of the educational curriculum moving forward? Because it is so important, I think, for every child to grasp from inception. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
You know, I have to say like with my school and I have to give a shout out to Wismer, um, I've been very blessed um, right from a lot of the administrators. They've seen like some of the stuff that I started to do it doing like a decade ago, literally in my class. And I have to say, I was doing it silently because mindfulness was not that buzzword that everyone knew right. about, right? right? So I would quietly get the kids to, you know, let's do a little, you know, stillness circle. What are we noticing? All this stuff, right? And then I had one of the administrators sit in on our little community circle and she's like, wow. And, you know, I would have kids with various needs and discipline issues, but there would never be issues in my class because we were right. always taking these moments right. uh, to reflect, to go inwards. And something unheard of, but a couple of years ago, I was really blessed with an assignment where I was actually teaching about 400 students a week in my school. So we actually had mindfulness built into our curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I always applaud that administrator who did that because it made such a difference. So mindfulness is the, just such a common word at our school now, the teachers, the students know about it. And um, I completely agree with you, Tanya, it needs to be out there. It needs to be part of the curriculum. It um, does. For sure. And right. then how, but like you said, inception. Inception. <laughs> it but needs to be at prenatal classes. It, it really does because we carry those vibrations in our room as, as, as women, as we are giving, you know, I do a whole, a whole talk on uh, with the emotions that our mother was feeling when they were carrying us releases a chemical in the brain that, you know, now makes us addicted to this chemical, whether it's the happy chemical or the sad chemical that we want. So when we as women carrying these children have a healthy dialogue and with healthy internal conversation and we use those powerful words you show the plants the vibration and what it does to the fetus on the inside is you know phenomenal but uh, there is hope if that doesn't happen and that's where Shamina you come into play with your psychotherapy <laughs> where mm -hmm. you know you get to capture everybody and say guys it's not over yet we still have time right <laughs> Yeah, we can still get this done, right? So yeah. you guys are playing very vital roles. So let's go back into um, the idea of words, because I know that for me, I like to say that we're using low frequency words, high frequency words, and master frequency words. And people are like, there's a master frequency word? What are you talking about? And the best way that I describe it is the low frequencies are the can'ts and the don'ts and the won'ts and the shouldn'ts. And then we go into the high frequency words, which are, you know, it, it's going, going, uh, the INGs, I call it, is the simplest way that I yeah. can put it. The INGs, which are always in the future. And then, but constantly that future is being made on the past, the decisions are being made on the past. So you're really kind of stuck. You're not really, but the now is like, I am. It's now. It's, you know, and that, those are powerful. So let's get into that a little bit more. Um, I'll let any of you, you know, contribute. So, you know that. what, I think going into that, maybe we could get our audience and including ourselves to kind of experience some of this frequency that we're sure, talking about in words. And, and maybe we can do a little bit of a guided kind of visualization and, and really ask yourself what you're noticing, not with any expectations or judgment, just with that curiosity, that kindness, that gentleness, which is really mindfulness to really explore what's happening. So we'll just maybe take you on a little quick journey. Absolutely, um, perhaps we can start, <laughs> And we can do a little bit of closing our eyes or just lowering your gaze and just start by taking a deep breath in and a big releasing sigh out. Okay, so just kind of see yourself as a neutral being right now, neutral body, just sitting here. Just allow your feet to make contact with the floor. Just bring your awareness to that. What we're doing is we're just kind of settling in. So I'm gonna give you like a trigger word, okay? And when I say trigger, it's like a stimulant. I'm gonna give you a word and I want you to literally be this word, feel it, breathe it. Maybe there will be images or a color coming up as we go through this process. So just gently breathe in, inhale. And the word is anger or angry. And you're going to exhale. So breathe in anger or the word angry. And exhale anger and angry. And I want you to just become a little bit observant of how this body is reacting or maybe not even reacting, maybe even resisting. Just mindfully notice that. Is, your, is there any sensations in the body? that you're noticing? Is there any thoughts when this word anger or angry is being presented to you? Is there a person or an event that comes to your mind that pops up? 
anger. How does this body react to that word? Okay, beautiful. We're gonna let this word anger or angry, we're gonna release it. So we're gonna take a deep inhale in and a big exhale out, sigh it out. <sighs> let it go. You can take a couple more deep inhales in Release that word out. Excellent. And I'm just going to ask you or invite you rather to open your eyes if your eyes were closed. And we're just going to do a quick share as to how that experience felt for you, Shamina and Tanya. And any of your audience that's watching right now, they can chime in in the chat. Did you notice anything in your body with that word? You know, it's funny. I didn't, I thought of myself. It went to inner self for me. Uh, and it went to a familiar, it felt very familiar. It didn't feel resistant or anything because I had been, it, the hurt starts before anger. And I think that it was like, oh, this is familiar. So I think my body was just like, okay, you're home. <laughs> you're home. <laughs> There's an awareness there. Right. right. And notice that any of these experiences that we feel, that's our truth in the moment, right? right. Like to not tell anyone your experience. That's why I tell my students too, when we do our meditations and if they're experiencing a dinosaur come into their vision, that's their truth of the matter in that experience. Right. Like who am I to say that? So that's amazing that you're able to know. Well, it's just, you know what, it's funny because I've known that as being like a lineage thing of anger being passed down and which stems out of the hurt. So it's, you know, something that I'm very aware of, of dissolving that. See, I don't look at the, at the anger itself versus it's just a behavior that's being passed down of how to respond to life. So it's like, okay, oh, I've got to find a new response, a new feeling. <laughs> and it, what's interesting is for me is like immediately when I said the word and I'm doing this with you is I felt resistance. Like I don't want to feel that. Oh, wow. Okay. Right away. And then I noticed like my heart tightening a little bit. Yes. Um, so that's what I was noting. Sh uh, Shamina, did you experience anything? With that yeah. Word? So I just want to mention one thing when Tanya was talking about the phase, like it's home, right? So it's very good. I think that's so important because I think it's good to recognize the emotion, whether it's, it, especially if it is negative, right? You don't want to push it away. You want to say, okay, this is happening to me, right? Um, and then you learn from that emotion because what happens a lot of times, you know, especially, you know, people sometimes, you know, who want to be only positive, or who only want to be in the light, um, you know, they, sh they, sh they actually shove the negative aside without looking at it, right? And it's so important just to look at it and say, this has, uh, you know, an information for me too as well. So what am I here to learn? So when you're open like that, Tanya, with the negative emotion, which we call negative, but it is actually not, anger is That's not negative, right? right? Um, so when we, when, we, when we say, okay, this has come up now, so what does it mean for me? Right. Or what is it trying to tell me? And then take one step further into right. it, right? So for, it. My experience, so for my experience with the anger, I was like, a girl, you know, I, you know I, I tightened up and I noticed how my body was uh, with this the anger. So I noticed how it is. So it's yeah. interesting that you mentioned that. Femina, and it, and, and it, does feel, it does feel very familiar too as well. And, you know, I really like the fact that you alluded that the fact that anger is not a negative emotion, because that's something I, I always teach also my students and clients, that there is no negative emotion. It's how our body is reacting to it. Mm -hmm. that feels. We don't that like emotion. anger. We don't like um you know, how it sits in our body. And so we want to push it away or we don't want to deal with it. And that makes it like a negative emotion. Right. Like emotions are just emotions, right? They're energy in motion. That's what, that's what they are. Right. They have their own frequency. <laughs> yes. And so there is no good or bad, but how we react to it, um, you know, sometimes anger comes out in a yell or a scream or a physical hit, unfortunately, and we don't like that. And so that's why we call it that. So thanks for bringing that up, Shimna, because that's so important, I think. And, and just any emotion that you feel, just know that that is your experience in the now, right? Mm -hmm. And it's okay. And that 
it's going to pass. It's not there forever because we cannot be happy forever. We cannot be sad forever. You know, it's like a roller coaster. Um, but these triggers that happen in our life through words, um, through actions, through our thought process, they all sit with us and they show us something. They are there to teach us something. Absolutely. So maybe we'll move on and we'll try to do the opposite now and try to feel that frequency yes. um, in a very quick, short practice. So we'll just, again, close our eyes or lower our gaze and just, again, feel our feet on the ground or your seat on the surface below you. And the reason I am actually asking you to do that is just to get you in this grounded kind of feeling. You know, mindfulness is really where your feet, be where your feet are in this present moment. Feel this earth supporting you. Come to this place of just neutrality, to be a watchful observer of whatever is experiences to happen soon. We're gonna take a deep inhale in and a big exhale out again. Excellent. And now with our next inhale, we are going to inhale the word love. Breathe in love. And exhale love. Allow love to consume you, each cell of your body. Continuing to breathe and notice the body responding to love. Perhaps a thought emerges or an emotion presents itself or a sensation in the body, a visualization. It could be any one of those things. Just be open to the word love. Allow love to fill and consume you. Can you even tap into perhaps what you feel, perhaps even energetically? Some of us are a bit open to sensing energy. I think we all are actually. And can you kind of tap into that? Perhaps not even in your body, but you may be able to sense it in other people's bodies. Perhaps. Notice that. Beautiful. Taking a deep belly breath in. Allowing love to fill you. And now exhale. Releasing love. Out there to the world. And in your own time, when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Wow, big smiles, I see. <laughs> and I want to jump in and share the experience. Go right ahead. I was going to ask you. <laughs> I was like, Ooh. I felt equally as at home. The difference is I could feel the vibration raise because I actually could feel the sensations in my body, in my fingers and my toes. I could feel the tingling feeling. Um, it actually, when you said, talk about the energy before you said that, I had, could feel my heart engulfing the world. I could feel the essence of who I am, love. I could feel the love that I just have for everybody that I haven't met yet. And for it just, it's just such, so the presence of being more at home in my body with love was just elevated to a whole other level you felt I felt like I could dance I felt like happy I felt grateful like it was just such a warm loving cozy comfortable blessing kind of a feeling like you're just like you want more of it <laughs> and isn't it interesting it was by one word that I said love. yes yes That's it, right Shamina did you have anything you yeah know? one word sometimes has attached to it the whole story of your life sometimes right you say one word and you kind of see your whole life there mm -hmm. and so for me it was the same thing I felt very light inside uh, I felt expansion inside I felt peace inside um, and, and you can you can tell the difference between those two words mm -hmm. right and that's where the frequencies come in right we have a we have a chart there which which sure. actually um tell you the number of the frequency uh, of and what emotion 
And uh, I think this chart is coming from Dr. Abraham Hicks, who studied emotions and, um, uh, and the frequency. So if you look at the, um, the chart, the enlightenment and peace and joy and love, they're sort of on the, on the higher frequency. These are the emotions that are going to make you feel light, feel at peace, feel joyful, and be at peace in this world. And what happens when you are in those sort of states is that you want to share the love, you mm -hmm. want to share the joy, right? Um, and, and you want everybody else to be happy too because you are happy. Um, when you are in, in the lower frequency um, emotions, uh, whether you are in grief or whether you're in, especially fear, right? When you're in fear, you know, every little thing will trigger you. And then you will, you will become mad at pe people and you will say something, right? So a lot of times, and this is where it's so important to be aware of what your story is inside of you and how you walk in life, right? Because whatever is inside of you, it's going to come out that way. Mm -hmm. And that's also where the power is. Yes. And this is, we are saying the, the power of words. It is, that's the power. That's the power that, you know, you are putting out there. And that's the power that you're putting inside of you. It's and funny, I always so say so that powerful. in five minutes, if you hear somebody speak and you hear the type of words that they're using, you can actually tell what they believe about themselves, what's going on in their body, why they're getting headaches, why they're sick all the time, why they're fatigued all the time. Like you can tell so much. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to. So true. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it is so, um, it's so powerful. So the first time I think it would be awareness, right? As, mm -hmm. um, that's so important. And I agree with you, Tanya. I think mindfulness should be in all the schools um, and teaching our kids mindfulness, so, so important. But even as adults, we didn't get this education when we were, in, when we were little, when we were in school. So you can start now by looking at your life and how you are. And also, I think the power is also in how you treat others as well, mm -hmm. right? Um, I just want to quickly, um, you know, share an example. Like, I think a lot of people um, will remember when they were little, somebody must have told them like, oh, uh, you are stupid or you are smart or you are you're not pretty. And that little one word, probably they remember until now right? They remember who told them, what was the situation, and what happened to them inside. And that's the power mm -hmm. of the word for others. Absolutely. So what you're putting out, is it's so, so important that how we can be mindful. And I think, Nilam, you have an acronym, right? Yeah, actually, you know, um, as I teach my clients and most of them are students, I always, and including my students at school, um, I always tell them to wait. And that is like a filter, like we filter our, our words that are about to come out because they are so powerful. And that wait acronym is, why am I talking? So you just pause and think about what's about to come out. First question yourself, why am I talking? And then the second filter would be think. And so you can kind of shrink it because think is a little bit long. But the think stands for what I'm about to say, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Or is, and is it kind? And we have those posters all over our classrooms and you know, even in my office and stuff. Um, but I think it really helps everyone, not just like our, the little kids, but ourselves too, that really what I have to say, do I really have to say it right now? Yes. Um, do I really need to disagree with this person right now? Is it really that big of a deal? And if it is, absolutely, go ahead and do so, but in a kind manner, right? right. Um, of course, we're entitled to our opinions. There, that's important and for us to express ourselves, but we can definitely do it in a kind manner, kind, gentle. But isn't it when you, things. when you, I, I'm going to interject here for one second because I have somebody writing in, uh, sending you lots of love. For me, I felt I'm surrounded by lots of, a beautiful woman we are and we are empowering each other 
Um, you are absolutely right, Shamina, with what you said. Neelam heard you taught mindfulness to so many of the students at our school, and a lot of it brushed off on the staff too, myself included. So, you know, you guys are obviously making your impact in the world, so continue doing what you're doing. And Neelam, when you talk about, you know, your um, mindfulness coming in the classroom and your kind words and thoughts, I find that when we teach our kids to understand themselves when we go through our own work process to know who we are we and we're, we're we've come to that loving place of who we are on the inside we actually it i don't know why it is it's just it just is that we want to be kind to others because we're being kind to ourselves <laughs> That rippling effect, right? It's yeah. kind of like that word love. You just want to send it out and hug the world, right? right it's that right. sensation, yeah. It is. And I think that that's where um, the whole, when you look on the enlightenment scale of that little cone that you just, the frequency chart, you know, when you talk about enlightenment, for me, I've always, from my own upbringing and my own spiritual teaching, was seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of the attitude. And that for me was my life lesson of study yourself, know yourself and unlock the window to your soul. And that's where your true power lies in that. And um, it, that is the enlightenment when you can get to that place of enlightenment of yourself in your soul that you're operating on a frequency that's far not. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, I always remind my own family members and including myself that the, the greatest and most intimate relationship is the one of yourself, yes. right? You are going to be with yourself the longest yes. <laughs> other than any other relationship that you have, be it your spouse, your parents, your children, right? Right. Um, so why not spend that time to get to know yourself, right? right. Intimately with right. curiosity, with love, right? And I like the word curious because, you know, it is, it makes it when you feel your body, when you approach it, when you talk about words and you actually feel your body, your body is, it's, it sounds like it's a hmm versus a resistance, a heaviness, you know, um, when you're comfortable with something, your body relaxes, when you're accepting something, it's coming in words, all those little, like not little words, those words that, you know, when you're saying I am, it just is. There's no, there's no question about the I am. Um, all that when you're love, when you say love, it just is love. Your heart, your heart just instantly, you know. Um, I just want to add this in really quickly. Um, you know, when we use negative words to describe positive experiences, uh, for instance, you know, I can't wait till Friday. Well, why can't you wait till Friday? <laughs> Well, what, what is it? What does it look like if you say, I look forward to Friday? Mm -hmm. Your body actually propels forward. Propels it exactly. Yes. So when we do muscle testing on can't, the body's actually weaker in a weakened state. And when you look forward to Friday, your body's in a more progressive state. Yes. It's in an elevated upward moving motion. So I always ask people to be mindful of the words that they're using. You know, I'm trying to lose weight. Well, I'm losing weight feels more empowering yes. versus I'm trying. Trying feels so defeated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trying actually is a word that means that you really don't want to do it. Right. You're just saying. <laughs> right? I didn't and want to I'm say trying. that, but you said I'm it. Trying. Trying. Not doing it. <laughs> I've been trying so many things for decades. And it's You're still so not working. working, right? It's the excuse. Yeah. I call it the escape. Yeah. You know, it gives us an excuse to fail or to not, I, and not even failure, just it gives us an excuse to overcome that fear of progressing and moving yeah. forward, right? And that's the important thing is that fear, right? right. It's that, that's the another, another script that goes in the back of our minds. Like even right now, the fact that I'm here talking live, yeah, there was a little bit of fear talk happening, but I had to overcome that because the thing is, if we're getting locked in those moments of fear, we're not allowing ourselves to experience right. and grow and evolve, yes. right? And that fear script is always going to be there. But what, what lies behind, if you can get past that fear, what lies there? All these wonderful opportunities, Tanya talks, you know, flow, glow, grow. Of course, there was fear in that for me to open up mindfulness. What's mindfulness, you know? Right. Um, even my self-published book, what was that all about? But I had to overcome that. And that in itself is that script, that inner script that's talking, which is also past conditioning of you cannot, of course, right? or of course. you're not enough, or you're not worthy enough. Right. So diving deep into yourself and that, that script. And if you're able to shift that within yourself lies, the whole world is in your hands, really. Right. right? 
And it's, yeah. it's funny because we had a talk, um, Neelam and I offline about, you know, and I, I always say this, and you're an educator, that I support education, I support all of that. Um, but that is part of the fear is that we don't feel we're qualified academically. So all that stops us. So we run this tape that I'm not smart enough. I'm not this. I'm not, we run that negative tape. And so Shamina, you were about to say. I was just going to say, I was just going to add to the, with the stories, like, you know, I think really notice. So one of the things Naila mentioned is how you talk to yourself, right? So notice, because a lot of people are, you know, the way they talk to themselves, they would actually not dare talk to somebody else. I know. <laughs> right? Yeah. You're not good enough or you're not this or, you you know, you did this or how can you do this? You're so stupid. You wouldn't be able to tell that to somebody else or your right. loved one, right? You don't talk to like that to a loved one. So what is preventing you from talking or what is making you talk to yourself like that? Right. So maybe really open that up and be curious, right? Don't like, so judgment is another big one, mm -hmm. right? That's a whole other conversation, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Right? That's a whole other, well, it's funny because when I tuned into that for myself um, and, I, and I identified with that, I would never tell anybody, talk to somebody or coach somebody or inspire somebody out of a situation um, with the way I'm talking to myself. So I remember doing a trick and I pretended that I was myself talking to myself and I grabbed some popcorn and I started eating popcorn as if I was having a conversation with my girlfriend, who was me. And I started to talk to myself and I was like, oh, oh. Was, anybody watching me would have thought that, you know, what is she doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm with my girlfriend, <laughs> my invisible girlfriend. <laughs> having a chat you know but it really diffused the situation at the time but it was a it was a fun exercise and that one of the things that I really really support is have with the curiosity coupled with fun and adventure and excitement because it really is exciting when you get to know yourself and clear it out all and it's stuff. hilarious right it like is, when yes. you can actually detach a little bit yeah and just watch yourself like, and laugh the way and laugh at yourself behaves and reacts you're like what right right but it's almost like you have to let go, right? Yes. You have to you have to just surrender and let go and say, okay, this is my being and this is what my being is in this moment. And this yes. is how I'm acting or reacting and just watch it from there. Yes. And, and, and be gentle, right? Be gentle yes. to yourself. Yeah. Just like you would be gentle to somebody who's hurt or who's afraid, you know, approach from that angle right. rather than, you know, oh, you did this and very, very judgmental and strict. Yes. Yeah. Um, I almost feel that we're, we, we require a part two to this because I feel like we haven't even scratched the surface and, and the three of us know we haven't scratched the surface <laughs> of any of this because it's this just, like a teaser. <laughs> it, it really is because there's so much that goes into it. And it's mm -hmm. funny because just by simply changing the way you speak starts to connect you to self. It's just complimenting all, you know, it's, it's a good resource to have in this whole self-enlightenment, you know, expansion and becoming your greatest and most powerful self. And when people hear that, they're like, oh, powerful. And it's, no, it's taking back, just being comfortable and loving towards you where you're, where you're secure in who you are. Yes. Absolutely. And that's really what it is. That's where your power comes is this is me and I'm, ex I'm enough. You said it, and I've accepted myself. And the more I accept myself, the more the world will accept and embrace me. Um, you know, I say, you betray yourself, the world betrays you. Mm -hmm. You respect yourself, the world respects you. Exactly. And so, if you love yourself, the whole world. The loves world you. will love you, right? And that's really hard to say. I remember I did a talk, and I had asked the audience. You know, I did like a little guided meditation thing, and I said, you know, just love yourself. Like, say to yourself. I love you. I love right. you. I love you like 10, 15 times. And I had some women, they were in tears because it was very hard. Or there were women um, who said it for the first time to themselves. And it was so emotional. So, you know, even the practice of the word love, but uh, apply it to yourself. I love myself. Mm -hmm. And you can even say that a few times a day. It, it's, with that. 
well, then everybody has to write in. So I'm asking everybody to write to us and let us know what happens. Somebody's writing in and saying, I'd like to hear more about Neelam's acronym THINK, another talk perhaps. So I think I have two talks coming up. I think I have Shamina and Neelam coming back to join us to what it looks like to love yourself. I'm throwing it out there and I'm throwing them <laughs> on the spot on live TV sometime in the new year. And I'm throwing them out on the spot to come back so we can talk more about THINK. So we are hoping to see them back twice in January. So we're throwing it. <laughs> we're, we're there next week though, we're, right? We're there here next week. Another favorite topic of ours. <laughs> right. So I because I we really just aren't, uh, we're, we're, you know, coming to closer to an end. And Shanina, we do have a closing reflection that you're going to guide us through. Um, but it just, we're not even scratching the surface mm -hmm. on you know, words, um, anything that you guys would just before we get into the closing uh, closing reflection, is there anything that you would like to leave with the audience that um, I'll give you guys each about a minute and a half to just really share with the audience um, something that they can walk away with that they can start in their life right now in this moment. Uh, you know, both of you, I'd like to hear from both of you. I think I'll, if it's okay, Shabin, I'll start because um, mine is pretty brief and I'm just going to go right to the beginning of the talk, which is just ask yourself, who am I? Mm -hmm. And keep asking yourself because you are not finite. You are infinite. You're, you're beyond this physical being, this physical costume. And if you just start kind of diving deeper on a regular basis of who am I? Who am I now? Who am I now? And just start to watch what happens with that because mm -hmm. that's where it started for me and I'm just sharing my personal experience with that hoping that it's going to help some other people mm -hmm. yeah, but, uh, and, who am I powerful <laughs> and by just bringing a notch down to the practical um, I just wanted the audience to uh, really notice notice the words that are coming out of their mouth okay notice uh, what you are talking what words you are using all the time Okay, because that might be informing your story. Okay, mm -hmm. um, I would strongly encourage the audience who are listening not to take our words for it, yes. but experiment with yourself and look at and see the power that you have of creating the world that you want. Mm -hmm. What kind of world you want to live in, right? And that's something, uh, you know, just a reflection on your part. Like every day when you walk or, you know, if you have a moment, just notice. Or when you're telling somebody something, notice what, in what way are you telling? Are you coming uh, from a place of victim? Oh, poor me, right? That you're projecting a victim at, at the world. And the world is going to look at you as a victim. Mm -hmm rather than the power that you are. So just, you know, uh, you know just a few maybe uh, moments a day just to get to know a little bit about yourself and be self-aware. Mm -hmm. So it's all that inward work that we're doing on ourselves to reshape our vibrations, change our, the cells. And I, you know, I love connecting the energy, the body, all of it. It's just because it, it's all connected. And, and really feeling the body. So thank you guys for sharing that. Neil, I'm just going to ask really quickly if you wouldn't mind sharing with our audience the, the book that uh, the name of the book and the author that I'm encouraging everybody to go out there and either pick up the CD audio or buy the book. Uh, it's a great Christmas gift this season to give to all those out there that want to get started on the journey of understanding words. And, and it's a very simplified because it's very pictorial and it gives those crystals as imagery to support all the the content that is in that book and in that audio book so would you mind just sharing it with our audience sure the book is actually called the hidden messages in water mm -hmm. and the author is is dr Mas masuri emoto and do you mind spelling it just for the audience i don't sure. have it with me that's why i'm like ah. uh, oh you don't have uh, it. okay uh you could what, probably put it in the chat right okay yes Saru. uh yeah i can put it in the chat so, um, so everyone, you know, um, I'm just going to let Shanina take over from here um, while Neelam's putting it in the chat and I'll get it posted on, um, 
Uh, I'll get it posted uh, on, on Facebook after this talk, but uh, Shavita, closing reflection from you, please. Thank you for our audience. Sure, um, maybe just close your eyes and maybe um, breathe in, center in, in your breath right now and see how you're feeling right now. See what's coming up for you. And maybe in this moment, make the decision to get to know yourself better. Starting from now, maybe just at this time, one thing sufficient would be just to say hello to yourself. Like you are meeting yourself for the first time, for the very first time. So I would, if I, it was me, I would say, hello, Shamina. It's nice meeting with you. And I can't wait to get to know you better. I really want to know what you're like inside, what you are behind your fears, what motivates you, what do you want to create and bring to this world? What is your legacy? And just with, you, with those questions, really tune in and see what's coming up. We'll just pause here for one moment so you have a time with yourself. Whether you felt something, a hello back, or you didn't, it's all okay. Because you have taken this first step in the journey. In the journey of you, of who you are, the power that you are, the creator that you are. Just Inhale, a deep breath and exhale. And whenever you're ready, you can open your arms. Thank you, that was very nice. Isn't that we all wanna do is reintroduce ourselves to ourselves in the world. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing when we have that. Uh, opportunity. I'm encouraging everybody to write to us and let us know how you did with the exercises. Share with us your stories on how you felt on hearing the word anger and love and share with us your reflection on introducing yourself in this moment. We'd like to hear from you. Uh, you can write to us on tanyatalks.ca. Um, it was, I, you know, I, I just, I, I'm about transparency and real talk and I'm just telling you guys that we haven't even scratched the surface. I wish we could go on for the next three hours <laughs> because I feel that there's so much. So I'm, I'm, you know, we're we're gonna have to continue this on and have a continuation of this um, in in the coming weeks because I think it's just such a powerful thing that when people understand who they are and start to use words in in complimenting. Who, to, to express who they are. It is such a beautiful thing. We are beautiful beings. Uh, we're beautiful souls. And we all have a lot of love to give this world. So it was a pleasure, ladies, this evening. Thank you so much, Tanya. Thank you for giving us this platform to share openly. Yes. It's thank been you. Fun. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Yeah. Yes. Thank you all for tuning in. Yes. Thank you. Um, guys, please join us on Friday where we will um, have two more guests that will be talking to us about letting go, what it means to let go in your life. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing their stories and how they were able to let go in order to move forward. 
Uh, and it's all about that inner stuff that we, we have to get through in order to move forward. So um, as well, we will have next week, Neelam and Shamina will be joining us again next week, living with gratitude. So I almost feel already that we need to book like three additional shows because it's going to be, right? And I'm encouraging everybody just to really have fun on this journey of an adventure, be curious. Mm -hmm. um, it's exciting. And the more of us that can come together and really celebrate how beautiful this is, is it's just the, the, how we will change the vibrations of the world um, at large. Again, if you are looking for breakthrough conversations to help you get to the next level for your life, I would be happy to work with you. Feel free to visit TanyaRicketts.com to get started. Until then, guys, have a good evening. Thanks again, ladies. And we will see you soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Take Thank care. You. Good night, everybody. Good night.